In this video, we will do some College Board multiple choice questions about equivalent forms of rational and polynomial functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.11. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number one, the polynomial function p is given by p of x is equal to x plus two to the fourth power. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to x plus two to the fourth power? You can build something called Pascal's triangle by beginning with a triangle of ones. On the next row, because one plus one is two, we put a two right in the middle. And the beginning and end of every row will be a one. Going to the next row, one plus two is three, and two plus one is three. We begin and end always with a one. Let's do one more row together. One plus three is four, three plus three is six, and three plus one is four. And then you finish off the row with two ones. We can use Pascal's triangle to find the coefficients of a binomial raised to a power. Notice that we begin with row zero, then we have row one, row two, row three, etc. So a plus b to the fourth power will have these coefficients in expanded form. Let's begin to build an expanded expression for p of x using the coefficients that we found on Pascal's triangle. Now we use the first term of the binomial to fill in factors from left to right. The first term will fa have a factor of x to the fourth power, and then it decreases in degree for each term. So the next term will have a factor of x to the third power, and then x squared, and then x, which is x to the one power, and then x to the zero power, which is just a one, which you don't need to write. The second term of the binomial allows you to fill in factors from right to left, beginning with two to the fourth power. And then the next term over will have a factor of two to the third power, and then two squared, and then two to the one power, and then two to the zero power, which you don't need to write. Now we simplify. X to the fourth power times one is just X to the fourth power. Four times two is eight, so we have plus eight X to the third power. Two squared is four, times six is 24. So we have plus 24 X squared. Two to the third power is eight, times four is 32. So we have plus 32x, and two to the fourth power is 16, so plus 16. So the answer is C. Number two, the rational function r is given by r of x is equal to this, which is equal to this when you factor the numerator. Which of the following gives equations for all horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and slant asymptotes of the graph of r. They were very nice and factored the numerator for us, but we have been left to factor the denominator by ourselves. There is a common factor of x that we can pull out to the front, leaving x plus two as the second factor. Vertical asymptotes come from factors in the denominator that do not get canceled out. The factor of x plus two does get canceled out, so that will not lead to a vertical asymptote. It would give us a hole at x equals negative two. But we have this surviving factor of x. Setting that equal to zero gives us a vertical asymptote of x equals zero. Horizontal asymptotes come from the end behavior of the rational function. It's easiest to determine the end behavior using the unfactored form. The end behavior is the limit of r of x as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So the horizontal asymptote, if there is one, will be y equals this limit. As x approaches positive or negative infinity, the highest degree term in the numerator and the denominator matter the most. So the limit of r of x will be equivalent to the limit of x to the third power over x squared x to the third power divided by x squared simplifies to x. 
So what is the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of x? This is really two separate limits. The limit as x approaches positive infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Well, as x approaches positive infinity, guess what? x approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, x approaches negative infinity. Okay, that's just common sense. But you only have a horizontal asymptote when the limit is a constant. So R of x has no horizontal asymptotes. So far, we have discussed vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So we just need to figure out if there are any slant asymptotes. A rational function will have a slant asymptote when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator. And that is what we see here. x to the third power, that's one degree higher than x squared. So there will be a slant asymptote. We can determine what the slant asymptote is using polynomial long division we are dividing the denominator into the numerator. So set up your long division like this. You begin with the first term of each polynomial. x to the third power divided by x squared is x. And I'm going to like line that up with the x term. So I have an x right here. Next, we take this x and we sort of do the distributive property with the polynomial in the front. So x times x squared is x to the third power. x times 2x is 2x squared. And then we subtract this part. x to the third power minus x to the third power is 0. These cancel each other out. 8x squared minus 2x squared is 6x squared. And then we have 17x plus 10 minus 0. So that is 17x plus 10. Now we start over by dividing uh, 6x squared by x squared. That's going to leave simply 6. We once again do the distributive property with the 6. 6 times x squared is 6x squared and 6 times 2x is 12x. And then we subtract this polynomial that we just found. 6x squared minus 6x squared is 0. Those cancel each other out. 17x minus 12x is 5x. And 10 minus 0 is 10. This part down here is called the remainder. And it doesn't really matter for finding the slant asymptote because once you get down to the constant, you are looking at the slant asymptote basically right here. The slant asymptote will be y equals x plus 6. Looking back over our work, we have found two asymptotes. We found a vertical asymptote, x equals 0, and a slant asymptote, y equals x plus 6. That's why the answer is a. Number 3. The function f is given by f of x is equal to x plus 3 to the fourth power. When f is rewritten in expanded form like this, which of the following values is greatest? As we did on problem number 1, we can use Pascal's triangle to find the coefficients of a binomial raised to a power in expanded form a plus b to the fourth power will have these coefficients. Let us use the coefficients that we found on Pascal's triangle to begin to write an expression for f of x in expanded form. The term on the left combined with the exponent will give us the first factor on the left, x to the fourth power. Then the degree decreases by one as we go from left to right each term. So we will have x to the third power, x squared, x to the one power, and x to the zero power, which you don't write. The binomial term on the right, combined with the exponent, gives you the first factor on the right. So three to the fourth power. Working from right to left, the degree of this factor decreases by one each term until we get to three to the zero power, 
which is just a factor of 1, which you don't need to write. The first term simplifies to x to the fourth power. 3 times 4 is 12, so we have plus 12x to the third power. 3 squared is 9, and 6 times 9 is 54, so we have plus 54x squared. 3 to the third power is 27, and 4 times 27 is 108. So we have 108x. And then 3 to the fourth power is 81. You should definitely memorize that fact. It comes up a lot. Turns out that A is 12, B is 54, C is 108, and D is 81. So the value of C is the greatest, and the answer is C. Number four, the graph of which of the following functions in the xy plane has at least one x-intercept, at least one hole, at least one vertical asymptote, and a horizontal asymptote? Let's take these one option at a time. Option A, the numerator, is the difference of two squares and can be factored as x plus four times x minus four. The trinomial in the denominator can surely be factored. x squared is x times x. Six will either factor as one times six or two times three. Inner plus outer must equal middle. So I need a middle of negative one. So if I let the inner be positive 2x and the outer be negative 3x, that will give me a middle of negative 1. Also, positive 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, so we have factored it. X-intercepts, or zeros, come from factors that are only in the numerator. Uh, both of these factors are only in the numerator, so each of these will give us x-intercepts. X-intercepts, check. What about holes? A hole will occur when you have a factor in the denominator that cancels out with a factor in the numerator. And uh, none of these factors cancel out, so there will be no holes, and uh, A cannot be the answer. I'm skipping to option D, which has the same denominator, which we have already factored. I've just changed the numerator. It's still the difference of two squares, but x squared minus four factors as x plus two times x minus two. So, will there be at least one x-intercept? An x-intercept, or zero, comes from a factor in the numerator that is only in the numerator. So, um, x plus two is in the numerator and the denominator, so no x-intercept there. However, x minus two is only in the numerator. So, yes, there will be an x-intercept. What about a hole? A hole when occur, will occur when you have a factor in the denominator that gets canceled out by a factor in the numerator. And that happens with the x plus two. So yes, there will be at least one hole. What about vertical asymptote? A vertical asymptote will occur when you have a factor in the denominator that does not get canceled out by a factor in the numerator. The x minus three in the denominator does not get canceled out, so there is a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes come from the end behavior of the polynomial. If the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of f of x is equal to a constant, then y equals that constant is the horizontal asymptote. However, if the limit is infinity or negative infinity, then there will be no horizontal asymptote. As x approaches positive or negative infinity, these are the terms that matter the most. So the limit of f of x will be the same as the limit of x squared divided by x squared, which is one. And the limit of a constant is that constant. So there is a horizontal asymptote. It's y equals one. Option D has all of the things. So the answer is D. Number five, the polynomial function f is given by f of x equals two x to the third power minus three x squared minus 23 x plus 12. Which of the following is true about f of x divided by x plus three?
All of the options pertain to the remainder of this quotient. So let's do some long division and figure out the remainder. Polynomial long division begins by dividing the first term of each polynomial. So 2x to the third power divided by x, which is 2x squared. I'm going to line up these like terms right here. Next, we take this 2x squared and we do the distributive property. So 2x squared times x is 2x to the third power. 2x squared times 3 is positive 6x squared. Next, we subtract. 2x to the third power minus 2x to the third power is 0. Negative 3x squared minus 6x squared is negative 9x squared. Then we bring down the minus 23x and the plus 12. Now the process repeats. Negative 9x squared divided by x is negative 9x, which goes at the top right here. Now we do the distributive property with this negative 9x. Negative 9x times x is negative 9x squared. Negative 9x times 3 is negative 27x. Now we subtract and uh, minus negative 9x squared becomes plus 9x squared and these of course cancel each other out. Negative 23x minus negative 27x is really negative 23x plus 27x. That is 4x. And we bring down the 12. One more time we divide the first term of each polynomial. So 4x divided by x is positive 4. We do the distributive property with this 4. So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 3 is 12. Next we subtract, and because these are identical, we get that remainder of 0. Again, once you get to the constant term and you subtract, whatever is left is the remainder. Option A says, the quotient is a quadratic polynomial that factors. Whereas option B essentially says that the quotient is a polynomial that does not factor. So let's see whether or not we can factor this quotient. 2x squared can only factor as 2x times x. 4 will either factor as 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. We know that 2 times 2 cannot be the answer because the 2 would have to go here and here. And if the original polynomial did not have a common factor, neither one of these sets of parentheses should have a common factor in it. If we do 2 times 2, then we have a common factor of 2. And that shouldn't happen. If this trinomial factors at all, the 4 will have to factor as 1 times 4. We know not to put the 4 here because, again, that would cause a common factor in the first set of parentheses. We won't waste our time testing that. Instead, we know to put the 1 here and the 4 here. When you multiply two binomials, inner plus outer must equal the middle. So right now, I have an inner of positive 1x. Well, never mind the sign. Let's just say 1x. We have an outer of uh, 2x times 4, which is 8x. We need these to add up to be negative 9x. For that to happen, the inner and the outer both need to be negative. So that means a negative here and a negative here. This works out fine because negative 1 times negative 4 also gives us a positive 4. So there, we have factored it. So the answer is A. The remainder of this quotient is 0, and the quotient is a quadratic polynomial that factors into two linear factors involving only real numbers. Number 6. 
The functions g and f are given by g of x equals 3x squared minus 2x and f of x equals 6x to the fourth power plus 5x to the third power plus 3x minus 5. Which of the following statements is true about the remainder when f of x is divided by g of x? Once again, we will employ polynomial long division. This is f of x divided by g of x. However, I would like to make one small change right here. Notice that we go from a cubic term to a linear term. The quadratic term is missing. There's no x squared. I'm adding in 0x squared as a placeholder to help us stay organized. We begin by dividing the first term of each polynomial. 6x to the fourth power divided by 3x squared is going to be 2x squared. And let's line this up. So 2x squared. Next we distribute the 2x squared. 2x squared times 3x squared is 6x to the fourth power. 2x squared times negative 2x is negative 4x to the third power. Now we subtract. The 6x to the fourth power cancels out and 5x to the third power minus negative 4x to the third power is the same as 5x to the third power plus 4x to the third power, which is 9x to the third power. Bring down the 0x squared, the 3x, and the negative 5 and start over. 9x to the third power divided by 3x squared is 3x. So let's line those up. So 3x goes right here and now we distribute. 3x times 3x squared is 9x to the third power. 3x times negative 2x is negative 6x squared. Now we subtract. The 9x to the third power cancels out. 0x squared minus negative 6x squared is really 0x squared plus 6x squared. So we get positive 6x squared and we bring down the 3x and the minus 5. Now we start over again and we are dividing 6x squared by 3x squared. That's 2. So we put a plus 2 right here and we distribute one more time. 2 times 3x squared is 6x squared. 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x. Time to subtract. The 6x squared cancels out and 3x minus negative 4x is really 3x plus 4x which is 7x. Bringing down the minus 5, this is the remainder. We can eliminate options A and B which say that the remainder is 0. But both options C and D say that the remainder is 7x minus 5, which is correct. Both options C and D correctly interpret this non-zero remainder as meaning that g of x is not a factor of f of x. So the correct answer will come down to this. Will the graph of f of x divided by g of x have a slant asymptote or will the quotient not have a slant asymptote? We have learned that there is only a slant asymptote when the polynomial in the numerator has a degree that is exactly one more than the polynomial in the denominator. In this case, the degree of the numerator is 4 and the degree of the denominator is 2. Well, that is two more than the denominator, not one more. Therefore, this rational function does not have a slant asymptote and the answer is D. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.